Good morning, afternoon and evening, ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone else. This is a beginner electrical engineer here, and today I am going to teach you about diodes and light emitting diodes, LEDs for short. So let's get straight into this with your typical diode right here. Let's just give you a good look at that. So basically, a diode like this one, made of silicon and a few other elements and such. I'm not a chemist, I wouldn't know. Um, but basically, it allows current to flow in one direction in a circuit and not in another. That's pretty much it. It's as simple as it can be. Just in case you wanted to know what the circuit symbol was like. That is the typical symbol for a typical diode. I mean, there's a lot of different variations with diodes. Some are Xena diodes, also known as breakdown on av and avalanche diodes, but we're not going to cover them today. And secondly, there's LEDs. Now, LEDs are really quite simple. They're the same as normal, normal um, diodes, except when you current flows through them, they light up. Here's another red one. So you want to know the circuit symbol for an LED? It's like this. Okay, so it looks pretty similar, but this is not the circuit symbol for an LED yet. That is the circuit symbol for an LED. Notice the two arrows pointing away from the LED. That means it's emitting light, hence the name light emitting diode. There is also photodiodes, which have the arrows in reverse, and they basically create a bit of current or a, a, different, a difference in voltage across them, depending on the amount of light hitting them, basically. But that, they're a bit too complex to talk about today. So you want to see an LED in action. Well, I have this little box here that I made myself. As you might be able to tell, it was badly 3D printed. But it's an LED tester. You take your LED, you find the anode and the cathode, which is essentially one side and the other. And the easiest way to do that with an LED is there's a tiny little flat edge on these type of LEDs. That is the is the cathode, what we'll put in the black terminal. As with a normal LED, a, a normal diode, the cathode is indicated by the little white line usually, or little grey line. You might be able to see that. So let's light this baby up. So found the cathode, put it into the black terminal and put the anode into the other one and voila, it lights up as long as there's good contact between the two terminals. So if you want to make one of these, I shall show you in a future video. Just let me know and I shall show you. They are in actually quite simple and relatively cheap, but are still a good project to do on your own anyway. Just runs off a 9 volt battery. So, what is an LED used for? An LED is basically used for lighting something up. We've got an LED bulb right above me. It's not on right now, but um, they're relatively cheap. Mine's actually a Poundland bulb. And basically for indicators. You can use them in alongside your Arduino to see when an output is on or an, a, when a switch is on. Or There's many applications for LEDs. Most of them are trivial, believe it or not. Also, another thing to point out are these. These are tricolor LEDs, so three color LEDs. And each LED, each tricolor LED, has four legs. That's because there are three LEDs inside them. 
So this is the common app cathode arrangement, which is basically... How we do that? How we do that? How we do that? And all of the cathodes, which are the side with the line, same as with a normal diode package, are connected together, right there. And that goes to your minus again, or your zero volts. And this goes to your positive volts. Same with each of them. But each, each LED within a tricolor diode is its own color. So we've got a red, a green, and a blue in this case. You can get some with red, yellow, and orange if you wanted. I wouldn't see the point, but RGB LEDs, like this one. You can use alongside an Arduino or any other microcontroller in order to create pretty much any colour that doesn't involve black. So you get half of the visible colours that we can see, basically. You can have them fade in and out using pulse width modulation, which can be a video all of itself, basically. But we're not going to cover how to use these effectively today. Instead, we're going to move on to applications of typical diodes. So, the main application for a diode is to take AC, alternating current, alternating voltage, and turn it into DC, which is direct current, direct voltage. I'm sure if you're watching this, you might already know what they are. And they're basically used in transformers a lot. So, or alongside a transformer. So you take your electricity coming out of the plug socket, run it through a diode, and DC would come out the other end. Obviously it's not as simple as that, but that's the main gist of it. I mean, it really isn't a good way at all to just use one diode, because you lose half of the electricity, because it goes into the negative wave. What you really want is a bridge rectifier, which is four diodes in a very special arrangement. This is an example of one all in the same package. You can, you might be able to see, there we go, that there's a plus, a minus, and two squiggles for the AC in. You put your AC in there, and the positive voltage comes out there, and the negative voltage comes out there. Again, that's a video in and of itself, because these things can be studied very complexly. Okay, so you want to know what a bridge rectifier looks like in the circuit, sim circuit diagram. Well, basically, it's four diodes, and they're set out like this. That's AC in, let's just draw a squiggle. And the other side of the AC at the bottom. And then we've got this triangle here. And this triangle, each side, triangle, diamond. And each side of this diamond has a diode on it, like so. So that is what rectifies the current from AC to DC. And your positive is there, positive, and your negative is there, negative. So basically you can plug your mains in across there and DC would come out here. It would also be at mains voltage, so there's that. <laughs> However, I would also like to talk to you about this diode. This is just your typical diode again. It allows current to go one way, but not the other. However, this one cannot handle a lot of current, i.e. flowing in one direction. So basically, it's not meant for high-powered things, high-powered applications. This is more meant for signals, hence why this is a signal diode. And it'd be in place where you have a system of logic, a logic system, and you're trying to get the, um, you're trying to stop a signal from going back along a wire to another side of the logic system, which should be isolated from another. That sounds very complicated, but it's basically saying you can't, it stops a signal from going the wrong way, basically. There is one thing I would like to say about diodes, and that is that there is a voltage drop across them. So, unlike a resistor where the voltage is dependent on current, then the diodes 
have a voltage that is independent of current. You only need to reach 0.7 volts. That is not a 7. That is a very bad 7. 0.7 volts across the diode in order for it to start conducting. Somewhere around 0.6 to 0.8 volts typically. So in this case, with the AC bridge rectifier, because there's two pairs of diodes and only two are on at the same time, the output voltage is always um, 1.4 volts lower than your input voltage. As with LEDs, it's it depends mostly on the LED, but it can be anywhere from 1.8 volts per LED to 3 volts per LED, and if you really want to go in higher higher powered LEDs, such as the big what, lighting LEDs that need a heat sink, then the voltage drop can be much greater, up to 30 volts, I think. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the video. Unfortunately, as you can see, it's probably still a mess in terms of presentation and style, but I'm just trying to get things working. I'm actually using a slightly different setup than I have previously, and it's trial and experimentation at this point, trial and error. But if you like it, please let me know. If you want me to try something different, then also let me know. Don't forget to like it. If you do like this video, then hit that like button below. If you'd like to share it, that'd be great. I'd love to get more views. I've got like three, but I'm sure some people will like it. And if you share it, then you can spread the word. You can also follow me on Twitter and spread the word that way. Ta-da! See how I did that? Editing magic. Well, thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. And I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye!